Celia, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. We're, we're, we're going everywhere tonight. I just said we went to LA. We've been to Russia. Now we're in Big Bear. I understand. Yes. And if there's anywhere in the world like isolation, it's Big Bear. So you're, you're almost always isolated up there, but now you probably don't even notice what's going on. <laughs> well, it is uh, quite different. Like you say, we're staying inside. We are uh, keeping, um, uh, you know, our social distances. We are very careful with the hygiene. And our boxing training right now is uh, shut down. So I'm just in a gym keeping my um, strength and conditioning up. Um, I have a very tough fight coming up. How do you... Uh, I spoke to someone the other day who was due to fight a couple of weeks before you. You, of course, were supposed to go April, to April 17th. Um, and they said that they feel like almost they need another camp when they come back from this, you know, which I, I didn't really like to hear that. I understand it, but it's going to be one of those situations where right now no one knows when the return will be. I hope that your fight is rescheduled for June, certainly July. But you've almost got to stay focus because that call could come any time to say right here's your new date and it kind of like if you're not ready then it's going to put everything back well of course when something like this happens uh, you have to reset but we are fighters we are professional boxers this is not the first time a fight has been uh, um, has been off for us so so what we do we go back to the gym and we stay in shape we stay ready um, our training changes a little bit of course and you know our daily uh, goals and motivation change a little bit but the main goal goal is still there and it's uh, it's still the fight so when you get uh, you get the call about uh, uh, the fight or the show is on then um, you should be ready to get back to the gym and uh, get some sparring in and um, and yeah be ready Let's talk about that fight with Jessica McCaskill. Um, she's kind of been a bit of a revelation herself. She had a great fight with Casey Taylor at 135 yes. pounds. Probably gave her one of her toughest fights yet. When she was really inexperienced, Jessica McCaskill, came back, won a world title at 140, unified the division, now steps up. This is a, this is a tough fight, isn't it, against McCaskill? She's very game, she's very strong, and uh, she's, she's definitely going to come to fight. I fought, uh, we both fought uh, Farias, which is a brilliant fighter. And I actually thought Farias was going to beat Mikalski. So Mikalski beating Farias, a world champion, so seasoned, so good in experience. That was a big deal. That was huge. So I think um, those who have followed uh, boxing and followed uh, women's boxing for a while, they know that this is going to be a real tough fight. And those who haven't are the ones who are saying that, you know, this will... And this will be just a walkover and then she'll be ready for her next um, uh, challenge. And that's definitely, Mikhailsky is definitely not someone you're overlooking. And I'm not doing that either. Well, obviously at the moment, everyone's talking about future fights with Serrano and Taylor. And we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute. That's what everybody is, is messaging, talking about right now. I have to bring up Carissa Shields because, you know, she's, <laughs> she's relentless. I mean, I felt sorry for you the other day on Twitter because I know you're, quite quiet you don't really like any beef and she's good for boxing because she doesn't stop you know she's like on social media all day she's achieved a great deal as well but she's just you know she's on you isn't she she is on you she wouldn't let go the other night i think she has a little bit crush on uh, uh yeah, it's quite possible <laughs> No, but I, you know what you said there? I 100% agree. Clarissa is good for boxing. You know, she brings um, uh, excitement and she, uh, she brings the fans in and they get uh, very, um, um, you know, caught up in the whole thing. So, so she is, uh, she is, um, she is a good thing for boxing. She's still, She's still young and she's still learning how things working out. You know, I've been here, I've been um, doing this for a while now. So, of course, I, I've been through uh, um, uh, a lot of ups and downs. And uh, <laughs> it's not the first time I've been in uh, tough weather. Um, but um, Clarissa, you know, I, um, I think I um, pointed out to everyone why this isn't happening right now. Because... I have, I'm in a foursome that is quite extraordinary. Like this mini tournament with me, Mikelski, Katie Taylor, and um, Amanda Serrano. 
And that's something that, uh, you know, it would take a lot to drag me away from this, to, to be part of this all world champion, all, you know, potential Hall of uh, Famers. It's, uh, it's quite an astonishing situation right now in, in uh, women boxing. And for me coming, starting out when we were not allowed to go to the Olympics and um, Yes, the, the whole boxing thing being quite different. I think for me, this is uh, a little bit, um, it's, it's a little bit different maybe than the girls who came, who went to the Olympics and then went straight to the big um, promoters and TV screens. Um, I think this has a little bit different meaning uh, for me being a part of all this. Well, of course, one of the reasons that boxing for women did move into the Olympics was Katie Taylor and her push for that and the Olympic trials and stuff like that. Her fight was due to take place uh, on May the uh, early in May, May the 2nd with Amanda Serrano. That's now looking like July. I want you just to give me a little bit of analysis on that fight. I've, I've watched Amanda Serrano a few times now on our shows. I think she punches very hard. She's extremely confident. Um, a few people think that could be a, a tougher fight than expected for Kate Taylor. Yes. For me, it's a totally open fight is 50 50 i cannot for for anything pick a win a winner here because they are so good uh, with what they're doing uh you know katie taylor is so brilliant t technical and she's so fast has a great footwork um serrano she's strong you know she's relentless and um she's also a pretty good uh she's also a good technical and smart um uh fighter I just, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing fight. And I was, I'm so looking forward to this fight. Um, and then you have the winner of both these fights meeting That's each a natural, other. Yeah, I mean, basically, the winner of Ewan McCaskill and the winner of Taylor Serrano is, is a done deal, really, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's an absolute must. The biggest fight in women's boxing. But when you talk about your weight for that fight, obviously, the fight with McCaskill is at 145. Yes. And Katie won a world title at 140. She struggled to make 140, or she struggled to reach 140, rather, rather than make it. So, you think you could come down a pound or two or you know, around from 145 to, to get that on? Yes. I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I'm a small uh, welterweight, you know. I walk around as a welterweight. Mm. I shouldn't be a problem at all. Good. And just, just lastly, Cecilia, obviously, you were responsible for the growth of, of women's boxing in the professional ranks just incredible right now to see not only the growth of women's boxing but also and we know that there isn't financial parity yet between the, the mm. women and the men but we are you know we, we, we're really making strides and we're getting there and I think the mega fights are going to start seeing that that big money and, and you you deserve it you know I think that I, I always say that in the press conferences it's, I don't look at it as men's boxing and women's boxing it's just boxing it's a tv product for fans and broadcasters. And if it's entertaining, it's entertaining. And all of the top level female fights are always entertaining. Yeah, and I'm glad more and more come around to um, to to understand that point. You know, we have, um, there's always been, um, unfortunately, um, guys who has uh, more insecurity with themselves and um, more... Um, what can I, yeah, I honestly, some of the most amazing fighters and promoters up has been, who's been supporting me has been, uh, Tom Loeffler, it's been you, it's been Vladimir Klitschko. Um, I can mention a lot of, uh, but, but they, like you say, they just see, they just see a fighter. They don't see if you're a male or if you're a female, that doesn't matter to them. It doesn't, um, we all do it for the love of boxing and uh, and I think you know it's just so weird to me that what kind of sex you're born with is um, is that correct um, yeah. in English yeah okay you know it's just um, that 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 that's um, uh, that is the thing that is actually deciding what you're going to pay. Ring. 
I understand. I understand. We got there in the end. I just want to say thanks for coming on, Cecilia. <laughs> I wish you all the best up there in Big Bear. And we look forward to rescheduling the fight with Jessica McCaskill very soon.